Welcome to the Wool Needles Hands podcast. My name is Taylor, and this is a podcast about knitting and making and getting crafty. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, where I'm from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our two-year-old son, Angus, and our lazy cat, Oscar. This is episode 11. Welcome back if you are a returning viewer and subscriber, and welcome for the first time if you are just stopping by to check out the podcast. Thank you so much if that's the case. Returning and new viewers and subscribers, it's just so cool to have you here um, taking part in all of this with me. So welcome, and I hope you find something that you love here. Stick around. Definitely hit the thumbs up if you like what you see, and then don't forget to subscribe so that you can get the videos and the new uploads as they come on your YouTube feed. The last couple of weeks have been really, really big for me, super exciting with the launch of Fiber for the People, my new hand-dyed yarn business. And so I have a lot to share with you guys about that today. But just so you know, for your own kind of convenience, because these episodes do tend to be a little lengthy, I have put in timestamps down below, and I'm also going to put timestamps in on each of the titles in between the segments. So that way you can kind of know if you don't have enough time to watch the whole episode um, from start to finish and you want to skip around, you know where to go um, when you're looking for those different segments. So just keep an eye out for that. Hi, welcome to the Wool Needles Hands podcast. This is a podcast primarily about knitting and fiber related goodness. I like to talk a lot about what I'm working on and some of the cool things that I find in the knitting community that I would like to share with you guys. Welcome, I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. This is where I'm from and this is where I live now with my husband, Brandon, our two year old son, Angus, and our lazy house cat, Oscar. This is episode 11 and I have a lot to share with you guys today. If you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. It's lovely to see you again. If you are a new viewer or a new subscriber, thank you so much for stopping by to check this out. I just hope that you get to spend some time with me today relaxing and knitting and that you come back every two weeks to watch because that means so much to me to have you as a part of this. That makes the whole thing go round. So thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, do not forget to hit the subscribe button at the end of the episode or right now so that way all of the new uploads come across your YouTube feed and you can stay up to date with everything that's going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast. Also, don't forget to thumbs up any of the videos as well. That does a lot for us YouTubers here. Any kind of interaction like that where you thumbs up the video, you subscribe, that helps get the word out about our podcast, about our shows. So please, if you like what you see, not only subscribe, but hit the thumbs up as well. And then leave a comment below and get involved in the community because there's lots of really cool stuff going on down below in the comment section as well as on the Ravelry group. We do have a Ravelry group for the Wool Needles Hands podcast. You can find that by going to Ravelry and searching in the groups tab, wool, comma, needles, comma, hands, podcast. Join the group there. It is a quickly growing and really bustling group. We have a couple of knit alongs, which we'll talk about in a second. Plus there's some cool topics that um, we're ch chatting about over there. So just make sure you can get involved that way. We'd love to have you. You are so welcome. So please get involved. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you have a question about the show, something you've seen, or you just want to drop a line, please contact me using the email account for the Wool Needles Hands podcast. That is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also send me a message on Ravelry. That works as well, um, whichever is easiest for you, but I definitely respond um, quickly. So if you have any questions, maybe you'd like to do a collaboration, you have something you'd like to donate to the show for a giveaway, just contact me. Let me know. I am more than happy to take whatever it is you'd like to donate to get the word out there about your business. I love doing that. So if you have anything like that that you'd like to get in touch with me regarding, please do um, at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle for the Wool Needles Hands podcast is at Wool Needles Hands. And then I'm also operating over at fiber.for.the.people, which is my new hand dyed yarn business that just launched on June 1st. There's lots of yarny goodness going on over there. That's kind of where I like to keep the people following that journey updated on the new um, colorways that are going to be in the shop at the updates. We have a Fiber for the People update coming on June 15th which this is posted on June 14th, hopefully if everything goes well, unlike the last episode. And if that's the case, the update is tomorrow. So keep a lookout for that, but definitely head over to Instagram and follow both at Wool Needles Hands and at fiber.for.the.people. 
You can also stay up to date with Fiber for the People by heading over to the Fiber for the People website, which is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Don't forget to add yarn at the end because that I think is something that's left out and so people can't find the website. It is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Head over that way, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Newsletters will be going out every Tuesday, keeping subscribers up to date with what's going to be coming in upcoming shop launches. So definitely check that out. And then also don't forget to bookmark the website for shop updates so it's easy to find when those days come around. So that is fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. Sign up for the newsletter so that way you can stay updated. All right, guys, last episode, we had a 2000 plus subscriber giveaway question that was asked of you, the viewers, and I asked you to answer in the comment section below as opposed to over on the Ravelry thread, just to switch it up a little bit. I had so much fun reading all of your guys' responses. The question was, what is your one knitting or sewing or crocheting, whatever fiber craft you participate in, what is the one confession you have as that kind of crafter? And these responses were so awesome some just super funny a lot of them and it kind of makes you feel a little bit more comfortable about yourself as a crafter because you know there's other people out there that are committing these I don't know sins I guess you could say and they have these things they have, they want to confess to so if you want a good laugh if you kind of want to see the reality of the situation when it comes to knitters and crocheters and sewists head over to the previous episode and read the comments because it is so much fun I shared a lot of the comments with my mom and my sister-in-law we were out of town and I was reading them and we were just busting up laughing because it's so relatable and um I just <laughs> I love reading these kinds of um like sinful confessions of crafters because we sit on our couch and we knit on these projects and we do these little things that we hope nobody ever knows about because we're cutting corners or we're trying to make something a little bit easier for ourselves and we don't realize that everybody is doing this. So I really, really love the responses and I wanna share just a few of them with you um, from the previous comment section. There were well over 200 comments that were posted and so I'm not gonna share all of them obviously, but if you have some time and you're interested, head over and read some of those comments because they're so funny. So I just to share with you a few of them before I do a random number generator selection for the winner of the 2000 plus subscriber giveaway. Okay, the first one that I want to share is from Pau in Barcelona. He is the host of the Pau Knits podcast and a dear friend of mine. So Pau, I love you. This is hilarious. So I'm going to share it because it's already there and I just, I can't wait to share it. So here we go. All right. This is quite embarrassing. You all know, and you, Taylor, as well, that I hate weaving in ends. So two weeks ago, I did my very first giveaway for a stranded colorwork hat that I had knit with my hand-dyed yarn, and when I was leaving the house to go to my post office to send it away to Ohio, I remembered that, of course, I still had to weave in the, uh, the ends, and... And here comes the embarrassing part. Instead of going back in to finish it properly, I sent it to the winner with a note hoping that she would be able to do it herself. Oh... My gosh, that is hilarious. Love that. I mean, seriously, when you think that you, you know, have done something shameful, just remember Pow and his, um, his lack of end weaving in. So thank you, Pow, for sharing that. Okay, this one was brought to you by Denise White. My yarn confession is I hide yarn at work and sneak a skein home every time I finish off a skein since I'm probably stable but can't resist Instagram enabling. I thought that was good. I mean, can't we all relate to that? Okay, so this one comes to us from Patty Fontes. She says, just one confession? I don't like to swatch. I need to have mindless projects. Otherwise, I will make tons of mistakes. Knitting is my therapy. Hate pearl, so seed stitch is usually a no for me. I completely agree with you, Patty. I really don't like purling, and so seed, seed stitch, unless it's a really small portion or section of the knit, just really doesn't appeal to me, so I avoid it. Sostin Vance Vance, she says, I confess that although I said I was only going to knit for my stash this year, I have in fact bought yarn to replace each one I have used from my stash and started to knit with them. This could be a never-ending cycle. Yes, indeed, and that's okay, because it's yarn. It could be worse. 
Okay, this next one comes to us from Marie P- Marie Pierre Lassard, and she says, "My confession about knitting is that I'm excited when my husband is out for the night and my kids are sleeping because it sounds like time for knitting, time for myself. Thanks for the contest. I love that because I do enjoy those times when I can just sit on the couch and watch a podcast and knit. Um, those are kind of those peaceful moments that don't happen a lot. So when they do, it's very pleasant. So that's a pretty good confession. Colleen Sheridan says, "My confession is that I won't answer the." phone when I set aside an hour to knit no matter what. <laughs> That's good. Dominique Brown says my confession is that I knit when I'm driving. Well not when the car is moving but if I'm stuck in traffic or at a red light I carry a very easy project like a vanilla sock where I don't have to look at my knitting and keep my eyes on the road. I'm not sure if it's legal but I love it. I however keep my hands on the wheel when I'm actually driving and keep my knitting on my lap until the next red light. Since then I've never been angry to see the light turn yellow. I think that that's I think that that's done a lot more than people fess up to. And I don't, I've I've done it before as well. I've had like a sock and a bag in my passenger seat and I'll be at a, like stuck in traffic where nothing is moving or I'll, I'll be at a red light and I'll pick it up and I'll work on it because I can watch the road. I don't know. I don't know. Is that iffy? I would never do something like that when I'm driving. I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you do that? Do you knit at red lights? interesting question to bring up. So, okay guys, like I said, if you want a good laugh, if you want to read some of these amazing confessions that will make you realize that whatever it is that you're doing is probably not nearly that bad, or you have company in the matter, head over to the last episode, watch it if you haven't watched it, and then also read the comments because they are fantastic. But now it is time to do a random number generated selection for the winner of the 2000 plus subscriber giveaway. And just as a reminder, what you will be winning is two skeins of yarn. You will be winning a skein of yarn by Tilia. This is a yarn dyer out of Sweden and it is by Tilia and it is gorgeous. It is a 7525 and I believe yeah 7525 100 grams 463 yards and it is in the Easter sock colorway so it's beautiful it comes with a really cute stitch marker so you'll be getting a skein of this you will also be getting a skein of fiber for the people yarn which is my own hand dyed yarn and this is in the pearl jam colorway on my gold stellina base which is I don't know it's so beautiful I love this colorway on the gold stellina this is um 75 percent superwash merino 20 percent nylon and five percent gold stellina it's a two ply with a twist so you'll be getting this skein this skein and to top it off you will be getting dun, 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 a beautiful project bag by Hannah Lisa Hefferkamp. She has a shop on Etsy where she sells these gorgeous project bags and she also has a podcast called Hannah on the Road. So here is the project bag. This fabric is gorgeous you guys. It has a rose gold tone zipper. Um, here's her little tag with her logo. Yes, so this project bag and these two skeins of yarn are going to the winner of the 2000 plus subscriber giveaway and we are going to choose that person right now. So I am pulling out my phone and we are going to look up a random number. We have a total of, we have a total of 312 comments. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see. So I am going to randomly generate. And the number is, you can see it right there, number 27. So number 27 is Denise Neep. She left the confession. My knitting confession is I watch so many knitting podcasts that should be illegal. I even sneak them in at work on slower days. I sometimes also stick minis in my purse. So if I'm having a particularly rough night at work, I can just reach in and feel the wool. Denise, congratulations. You are the winner of the 2000 plus subscriber giveaway. Please email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com and you can provide me with your address so I know where to send your new yarn babies and project bag. So 
the first thing we have going on is the Spin for All 2017. It is a spin along that is for drop spindlers only, and it's being co-hosted by Joy from The Anxious Knitter and Katie from the Arrow Knits podcast, as well as myself. We have made a promotional video for the spin along, and I'm going to pop that link up right over here. If you haven't seen the promotional video yet, if you want to know more about this particular spin along, please check out that link, learn a little bit more about what's going on, and then you can head over to each of our Ravelry pages. We have a thread for both um, introduction to the spin for all and then we also have a chatter thread going on right now so definitely don't forget to check out that spin for all 2017 promo video to learn a little bit more the other knit along that we have going on with the wool needles hands podcast as well as the wool jewel podcast with caitlin and the yarn to table podcast with celeste is the great unravel 2017 and this knit along is going to be wrapping up on july 17th we extended the deadline to give some the garment knitters involved in this knit along a little bit more time to work on their projects what this is is a knit along where we are harvesting recycled fiber from thrifted knitwear and using that fiber to knit up new projects. There is also a promotional video for this knit along. Again, it's going to pop up right over here. If you would like to know more about this knit along and if you'd like to get involved, you still have some time. We have nearly a month left, so definitely check out the video. Head over again to the Ravelry pages for not only our podcast here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast, but also the podcast groups for the Wool Jewel podcast as well as the Yarn to Table podcast because there's lots going on over there regarding this particular knit along, so be sure to check that out. There is a prize for that knit along and it is in the promotional video, so you can see all of that there. Um, um, and kind of get a little bit more information in those videos. So definitely check it out and get involved. So Sarah, who is flower to unravelry, and she is also the lovely drop spindling expert and employee at my favorite local yarn shop, um, Mirage Fiber Arts, she asked me a question on my Ask Anything thread, and even though this isn't that segment, it's relevant to what I'm drinking today. And she kind of challenged me, or just asked me what kinds of summery, colder beverages can she expect me to be drinking on the podcast since it's starting to warm up here in Henderson in Las Vegas. And so I decided that, um, I would, I would accept that challenge. And so today I am not drinking tea and I'm, <laughs> I'm drinking a smoothie and I don't know why I chose this particular smoothie to be the first one that I show as a non, you know, tea related beverage because it's not very pretty. It looks like super healthy. Not that there's anything, there's nothing wrong with healthy smoothies. I'm not gonna be that person who's, you know, healthy smoothies are no fun. I'm, you know, it's it's a good thing to drink healthy smoothies. This one just happens to be ugly or look a little bit like a chocolate something or other only because there's frozen spinach in there. And I'm gonna give you the recipe for this, but the reason I decided to do this was because number one, um, Sarah, I decided instead of making my usual tea that I was going to maybe accept this little challenge that you gave me and try something cold. And I just whipped it together with stuff that we had in the refrigerator and freezer. So that's what I'm drinking today. This is a fruit smoothie with some frozen spinach in there for added uh, vitamins and nutrients. So what this is, and it's really, really delicious. So don't let the weird color fool you. It's actually quite good. This is in the blender and I have one of those really cool like ninja blenders which if you're in the market for a new blender don't overlook the ninja. It's pretty fantastic. But what I did was I put in about half a cup of frozen mango chunks. I would say about a cup of chopped up strawberries, half of a banana, half a cup of Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt all the way. If you're going to have Greek yogurt, you got to do it right. So I used the full fat uh, Faye Greek yogurt, a half a cup of frozen spinach. And that's the way to do smoothies, by the way. If you want to get into to making smoothies and use lots of really great green vegetables in there, don't underestimate the power of frozen kale and spinach. So those are the two most popular green leafy vegetables that are used in um, smoothies like this. You don't have to buy it fresh. It's just as nutritious if you buy it frozen. And in some cases, it's even more so because it's flash frozen at the peak of, you know, ripeness or the peak of its heart. You know, it's just, it's flash frozen when it is the most nutritious. So don't overlook those things. It keeps for, it makes for really easy smoothie making. You can keep it in your freezer for a long time and it's easy to just grab a handful of frozen, you know, leafy vegetables and throw it in the blender. So that's what I used here. So we have that and then I also did a little bit of apple juice and a little bit of water and then I used honey to sweeten it down a little bit. So that's all that's in here and it's really, really good. 
I'm a little concerned that if I drink this while I'm filming that something's gonna be in my teeth and so that makes me a little bit nervous. I don't know if I'm going to be drinking smoothies on the podcast in the future because a smoothie is like a meal. When you sit and you drink it, it's not like you can just take a sip of tea and set it down and move on. It's like you kind of got to deal with that smoothie for a minute because it's more than just a a smoothie is more than a beverage. It's definitely much more than that. But you know, it's super creamy and I don't use any ice or I didn't use any ice in it this time just because I like my smoothies to be smooth and not icy. So yeah, that's what I'm having here. This brown, healthy smoothie thing. If you have any recommendations for easy, but um, really tasty, cold, beverages that I could have here on the podcast, please leave me um, a suggestion, maybe some recipes. I would love to try out anything you guys provide me. So yeah, definitely do that. Because I think that Sarah, that was a really good thing to ask me because I do need to change it up. It's not, you know, the days are getting warmer. Even though I'm inside and it's air conditioned, it's still nice to have a cold beverage as opposed to a piping hot cup of tea. Okay, to piggyback off of the What You Drinking Girl segment of the podcast, I am going to do the Ask Me Anything po- segment of the podcast. I have um, just a couple of questions that I'm going to answer today, and they aren't going to be as lengthy as the last episode. The first question is the second part of the question that was provided by Sarah, who is Flower 2 on Ravelry. She says, not only asking me about my summer beverage choice, but she also asks me... My first question, so this is the one I'm going to be answering, what is your all-time favorite sock pattern? I know we see vanilla socks often, which is always so great for showcasing hand-dyed yarns. Do you have a go-to pattern for non-vanilla socks, or do you just wing it? This kind of is like my confession, you know, considering that we did confessions in the last episode. My confession is that I have never knit anything other than a vanilla sock. I really enjoy knitting vanilla socks. I have, I've seen beautiful sock patterns and I was working on my pinecone stitch sock, which I haven't frogged yet. It's sitting right over there on the shelf. We know the whole story about the pinecone stitch sock, but that's the only, you know, sock that I have ever attempted that was in a pattern. And I think that's because I really, really love to knit my socks with beautiful variegated hand dyed yarn because it's such a fun um, thing to see bloom in a sock. And also I just enjoy the mindlessness of a vanilla sock. So I guess I haven't really been drawn to knitting a heavily patterned sock, but I can see that changing, especially when the weather starts to cool down and it's much more appropriate to knit those patterned socks, which tend to be a little bit heavier. So I don't know, I have not knit a patterned sock and I guess I just really prefer vanilla socks. Is that crazy? I feel like, Yeah, there's so many great patterns of socks out there. Like, why would I not give it a shot? But I do really tend to believe that when you're going to spend all that time knitting a heavily patterned sock, that it's kind of a waste of beautiful yarn, or maybe not a waste of the yarn, because the beautiful hand-dyed yarn will show through and be kind of the star player, but it's a waste of that time that's spent creating that beautifully patterned sock because the heavily variegated yarn is going to almost you know, disguise the pattern a little bit. So I haven't found like, do I want to, you know, knit a solid color sock and a really pretty pattern? Or do I want to stick to my really pretty, you know, hand dyed yarn and knit my socks using that, which is a vanilla sock pattern? I don't know. That's just kind of where I am when it comes to sock patterns. So I don't really have a favorite patterned sock pattern to recommend. There's so many beautiful ones out there. I guess I'm just not, that's just not my jam. I really love me a vanilla sock. Okay, the next question is from Chick Knits, and Chick Knits is Shannon from British Columbia, Canada. Shannon asks, Hi Taylor, I was very fortunate to stumble across your podcast yesterday, and I'm really enjoying it. One of my goals this year is to try my hand at dyeing, and I wonder if you could recommend a book that you found to be a good resource, or any other good resources for tutorials. Thanks, Shannon. So I just wanted to do a quick book recommendation, and it's actually two books here, um, that I kind of use as go-to references for technical uh, you know, assistance, I guess, when it comes to dyeing yarn. I tend to, um, I don't rely on these books for creative assistance because I really think that you have to go with your passion and you have to go with what comes to you. Um, that's 
in my opinion, when it comes to being creative, that's incredibly important because if you try to let somebody else's creativity dictate what you think is creative or what you're going to express creatively, then it gets muddled down and you don't usually like the results. Um, I, I, can, I can attest to that firsthand. I feel like there have been times, you know, earlier when I first started dyeing yarn, I tried to kind of allow or I allowed what was going on in hand dyed yarn and, and the the trend that I saw, I kind of allowed that to dictate what I did when I tried dyeing yarn. And um, though some of the results were really beautiful, I wasn't always happy with it because I don't feel like it really spoke to me creatively. So I don't know, I would be really careful when it comes to letting resources like books um, drive your creativity. But when it comes to technically uh, having assistance technically or finding out you know, methods for different types of dyeing yarn, definitely resources like this are helpful. So the first one that I found to be um, kind of a good resource and it's what I used initially, it's, it's a little bit limited but that might be a good thing because it's not overwhelming. This is Hand Dyeing Yarn and Fleece by Gail Callahan. This is probably one of the first ones that'll pop up if you do an Amazon search for, you know, books on hand dyeing yarn. I think that this is a really good first step when you're getting into hand dyeing yarn because it's very, um, the book is organized really nicely, super intuitive, super simple to navigate. And it takes you from, you know, the first, the very first step of setting up your dyeing studio and it walks you all the way through the process, all the way to kind of patterns that you can use to show off whatever dye job you did on your yarn. So it takes you step by step all the way through that process. And there's lots of really, really fun techniques that are being done in here. They talk about um, kind of like the, the sock blank uh, trend that's going on right now. There's a little bit of talk about that here when it talks about, you know, knitting, dyeing, and then unknitting. That's kind of what this whole section is about right here. So there's lots of cool things in here that can get you started. And I found that some of the techniques in here, though relatively simple um, or common, the way that they're described in here makes it really easy to figure out ways to make them your own and to add your own creative touch to them. So yeah, I would definitely, if, if you're going to get, you know, a book to start and you don't have anything yet, definitely start with this book. I think this is a really good place to get your initial inspiration. And then another one that I found to be really helpful is Dying to Spin and Knit. And this one, um, this is by Felicia Lowe. This one, and she's of Sweet Georgia Yarns. If you are not familiar with Felicia Yo, she is the um, dyer behind Sweet Georgia Yarns. And so it's kind of nice because she's an indie dyer as it is, and that gives you kind of, she, they, she's called an artisanal hand dyer on the About the Author section of this book, which I kind of like that. That has a nice ring to it. You hear indie dyer, that's cool, right? Because it's kind of a cool thing to be considered, but an artisanal hand dyer, that's sophisticated, so. Anyway, this is a really cool resource because it not only talks about hand dyeing yarn, it talks about dyeing fiber, it talks about the different tools that you can use to get set up um, in, in much more detail than the previous book does. So I feel like the previous book is a great place to get started because it's not going to overload you with information. And then this is a really nice place to go next because it's going to go into a little bit more depth um, about, you know, everything that that book kind of brings up. So just something to, to keep in mind. Um, the photography is really beautiful um, in this book. Oh, gosh, just looking at it now, I really love it. And I really love when books and authors will provide snapshots of this part of the process, the note-taking part of the process. I think that is such a cool thing to see, kind of a cool thing to look at into like, you know, a person's process. Because when you're getting started, it's hard to know, it's hard to know where to, how to take your notes, how to create your formulas and all of that. So to be able to see a snapshot of that, that's really cool. I really, really like that. So, so yeah, this is definitely something I recommend. So you have Dying to Spin and Knit by Felicia Lowe, and you have Hand Dyeing Yarn and Fleece by Gail Callahan. Two really great options if you go, are going to break into hand dyeing yarn. An 
article was shared on Instagram just recently, and it came out in June 1st, and it was talking about women who, during times of war in our history and in the history of other countries, would use the craft of knitting as a form of espionage, whether it was knitting codes into their actual fabric or using the guise of knitting to kind of suggest that they were harmless or that they were not involved in espionage in some way, just to kind of you know, mask that true identity. And I thought that was super interesting when I saw it. It was just um, a headline and it said, the wartime spies who use knitting as an espionage tool. And I think the tagline was, grandma was knitting a sweater or was she? Something intriguing like that. And so I did a little bit more research. I read the article and I definitely urge you to read this article. You can find it. Um, it is by Natalie Zarelli and I'll link down into, I'll link to this article down below in the doobly-doo and in the show notes. But it is from the Atlas Obscure and it just talks about how um, women would use this craft as a form of espionage or to cover um, the espionage they were doing, whether it was directly related to the knitting or not. It was either a cover or an actual form of providing codes. And I just wanted to share that with you to urge you to go read the article, but also to give you a little bit of um, a snippet of what I took from that article that I thought was super interesting. So women, when they, as you know, if you know how to read your knitting, and this is definitely a skill I think any knitter should make sure to learn to do is being able to read your stitches. If you know how to do that, you know what a knit stitch looks like, you know what a purl stitch looks like. And if you're really good at it, you can identify decreases and increases by their type. Um, you can see where a cable begins and a cable ends and all of this, you can read those stitches really well and understand what's going on. It's almost like you're reading actual text. These women who were clearly must have been very good at this would either be hired by the military to read knitted fabric or hired in some kind of sneaky fashion. I guess it couldn't be officially hired, but I guess you could say tasked to knit fabric using these stitches as a means to communicate different information that they are able to glean from their situation. And so what I thought was really interesting was one such story, a woman who would sit on her porch and she would watch the trains passing in front of her home and the trains would be um, enemy forces going and coming and whatever and how often they were going she would knit a pearl stitch to represent a train passing or she would knit um, or she would drop a stitch to create a hole to represent something else with the goings and the comings of these enemy forces and that fabric would then be sent back to the allied military or the military of that country to provide information about the enemy forces. And I thought that is so cool that the craft has been used in that way, that women were, um, you know, women who, who seem to be very passive and just sit around knitting and have nothing better to do than just twiddling their fingers with knitting needles and whatnot, that whole, you know, persona that was assumed of these women, that they were actually doing something quite life-threatening, quite dangerous, especially if they were to be caught doing this to kind of help either a resistance or to help their country during times of war. So I thought that was really cool. Another instance that's mentioned in this article was using, and this takes, this took place during the American Revolution, where women would use the whole um, old woman knitting persona, that whole, just like I mentioned, that innocent, docile, uh, harmless old woman knitting as a way to disguise the fact that they were actually performing espionage or practicing espionage against the enemy forces. And one such example was a woman who would, they called her Molly Rinker, and she was a spy hired by George Washington to knit atop a hill where she could see enemy forces and she was able to provide information that she would stuff into the balls of her yarn and throw over a neighboring cliff where ally forces were below capturing her information and using that to go against the enemy forces. So, I mean, it's all kind of convoluted the way I'm explaining it to you because I feel like there's so much more to it than what I'm able to provide. But I just, I wanted to bring it up hoping that you would go and read this article for yourself just to kind of get an idea of what you know, knitters have done in the past to help serve their country. The title of the article is The Wartime Spies Who Used Knitting as an Espionage Tool, and it is by Natalie Zarelli, published in Atlas Obscura on June 1st, 2017. Check for the link and you guys can read more about that. But yeah, I thought it was super interesting. <music> Prepare to be amazed as I dazzle you with my unprecedented progress on all of my projects. 
yeah, I'm totally kidding. I have not made a whole lot of progress on my projects and the, that's because the last couple of weeks have been very exciting and very busy having to do with fiber for the people, but I have managed to find some time to squeeze in some knitting on um, one particular project. I've been spending most of my time knitting, but I've got a little bit done here and there. So I'm just going to share with you some of the projects that I've actually been working on between this episode and the previous episode. I'm not going to show you all of the projects that I have on the needles right now just because I don't want to spend time talking about things that I haven't really worked on. So we're just going to look at the things that I have worked on. And we're going to start with my drop spindle for the Spin for All 2017. And like I said, the amazing progress I've made on this, which is not very much. So this is all I have of my own hand spun yarn for the Spin for All 2017. And you guys, I know this is pathetic. This is not very much. And it's not only that, like, look how inconsistent it is. And then this, like, what is this? This isn't even spun. This is just like, I have a lot of work to do when it comes to figuring this out. And to be quite honest, I don't think, I haven't, I haven't given myself the time to just sit down and focus on spinning. And that's a goal of mine for, um, the next upcoming two weeks before the next episode is I want to, you know, have some time where I can sit down and just focus on this because I need to learn. I need to, number one, practice. Practice makes perfect. I need to practice. And I also just want to kind of do some more research on techniques for avoiding your pregnant worms, as somebody on the Ravelry group liked to say, and I thought that was hilarious because that's exactly what these look like. Um, so I have a lot to learn. I have a lot of practice that I need to do, but this is all I have so far, and I'm really, really loving the fiber. I love the colorway. Um, this color of green teal is one of my favorites, so I'm really happy with that, but I just need to, like I said, sit down, spend some time, it is a spin along that I'm hosting. And so I need to keep that in mind and be a little bit more diligent about this. So yeah, that's where I am at this point. And, and I haven't, one thing about this or anything new that you take on, you have to kind of be in the right place or else when you are doing it. And when I say the right place, I think I mean the right headspace because when you do sit down to work on it, if that's not the case, you're not going to enjoy it as much. And that's kind of what I experienced the last time I sat down to work on this. Um, is I was like, I just don't, I'm not enjoying this right now. This isn't, you know, this isn't that much fun. My fiber kept you know, coming, like I would try to draft more fiber and then it would just come straight off. And I think that has a lot to do with being a little bit more heavy handed because maybe I was being a little rushed. Who knows? You know, you just have to be in that right frame of mind to work on something like this. So yeah. So that is my spin for all 2017 progress. I am so thrilled with what I've been seeing uh, from those of you who are participating in the Spin for All 2017. It's so exciting. I think that's where I have the most fun with some of these knit alongs and, and in the case of this, a spin along is seeing the progress of others. You know, even if I'm not able to make as much progress as I'd like, or if I'm not able to make the finished object deadline, I just love seeing everything else going on in the community and the other things that people are working on. And in most cases that, you know, encourages me and inspires me to move forward and get things done. But that's kind of where I get most of my joy. I was on Instagram just recently and I saw the coolest post and the post was by On Ravelry She Is Kathy and she posted a really quick clip of herself on her drop spindle and she was sitting on the most incredible pom-pom chair and I wanted to share the pom-pom chair with you guys. She made this chair for Worldwide Knit and Public Day and she posted an image of her sitting in it and using her drop spindle and it was just such a cool chair. So I definitely want to take a moment to share with you that. I know it's not directly related to spinning, but she was spinning in the video and I just thought it was so cool. So here is that chair that is completely covered in pom-poms. Definitely thought that was awesome. So that is Kathy, who is Kathy on Ravelry. Her name is Kathy. You can actually see the post if you check out her Instagram account as well. All right, the next project that I have been working on, and this project went with me last weekend to Zion when we went to Zion with the family. It's a national park in Utah, close by where we are beautiful views and mountains and amazing hiking. And it was a ton of fun. And on the way up there, I was working on this, but I was super sleepy. It was um, the weekend following the launch of the shop. And so I had been busy and excited and I hadn't gotten much sleep. So I made a mistake and had to rip back. But what I have so far may not be much more than what I had last time. Story of my life, right? So here is my market bag and Guys, I love this market bag so much. Don't let my, you know, poor progress like fool you. This is such a fun knit, but I had about four inches more than what you're seeing here. 
And I don't know how I didn't notice that the mesh pattern was something had gone awry, but it had, so I had to tink back quite a bit. Or I just actually, um, I ripped back a couple rows and then I added my needle back and then I tinked back the rest of the way. So this is where I am again. So I we are actually gonna be going out to dinner tonight. Um, and I like to knit on the way to places that we go as a family because I don't know, I just, I like to knit in the car when my husband's driving and that's, you know, when we go out as a family, he's the one driving. And so this is definitely gonna go with me tonight when we go out because I would like to make up those rows that I had to tink back pretty quickly because I wanna get this done definitely in time for the July 17th deadline for the Great Unravel 2017, but also because I'd love to use it. Um, it's just a really cool bag. This is the Eileen bag. You can find it on Ravelry on my project page. I have added it there. But if you are struggling to find something to knit for the Great Unravel 2017, um, a market bag is a really, really great way to go. I was originally knitting a garment, the Espenson top, and I stopped because I just realized that, number one, <laughs> this is recycled fiber and that's great. But like anything recycled, it's going to have a weakness. It's been used quite a bit. Um, it's been pulled, it's been tugged, it's been washed. This is a cotton Raimi blend, so it's been washed. So it's not going to be as reliable as a brand new fiber um, would be. Unless, of course, you're working with wool, which is, you know, very resilient and very reliable if it's been taken care of properly. But stuff like this, where it's, um, you know, a plant-based fiber especially, it's going to wear and tear and not hold up. And it has, the yarn has snapped on me a few times and that's frustrating and so I'm kind of happy I chose not to continue with a, such a time-consuming item as that garment um, what if the fiber wasn't really up to snuff quite honestly if everybody decides to do a market bag I mean everybody being those who haven't figured out what they want to do for this knit along if you all decide to do a market bag that's great because it is such a cool project I mean I feel like every knitter should knit a really good market bag because I think everybody who should have, I, I don't know, like a handmade or some kind of a knit fabric market bag is such a cool staple wardrobe item, really functional. I just think that this is such a cool project. So I don't know, if you're looking for something to knit for the Great Unravel or just something to knit this summer that's not a garment that kind of, you know, is fun to knit in the warmer months, then try a market bag with any kind of fun fiber that you want. Yeah, I just, I don't know, I love it. I love the feel of it. I love this like mesh pattern here. It's just a lot of fun. So that is my Eileen bag. And my Eileen bag is living in a very appropriate project bag for this. This is my Saved by Kate project bag. This project bag is made from recycled textiles. As you can see, this is a denim jeans pocket. Um, and the bag is made from a recycled textile fabric here. Really, really well constructed, nice and sturdy. Love the straps. Love that this is a pocket in the front where I can stick my pattern. So I'm really, really excited about this. This is saved by Kate. And she has also been nice enough to donate another project bag like this one, different pattern, of course, but same style, with the denim pocket front, the really cool recycled fabric on the back. And this is a really great sturdy strap, kind of like a seatbelt material. This is going to be a gift in addition to the gifts I had already set aside for the Great Unravel 2017 knit along. So that is something to look forward to, but I really love this bag. So Katie, thank you so much for this project bag and definitely check out her Etsy shop, Saved by Kate on Etsy. I've been working on my oil spill socks a little bit more than my February socks, which isn't the way it should be, seeing as my February socks, it's the second of the two socks, so I need to just get it done so I can have a faux to show you guys. Um, but I've been so excited about the oil spill colorway. It is one of my own um, colorways for Fiber for the People, so I think that's why I've been working it up. These two <laughs> yarns, you know, I love them so much, so it's good that they're in the same bag together because they're equally fun to knit because Brandy has beautiful yarn. So I'm gonna show you the February sock first. There is absolutely no progress on this since the last time I showed it, so this is going to be brief. But for those of you who have not seen this uh, February sock, this is what I have so far. This is Long Dog Yarn in the February colorway, which is an exclusive colorway, and this is the Fig colorway for contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes. And the finish, or the hoe of this pair of socks is this right here. So this is what the yarn looks like all knit up. It's beautiful beautiful um, speckling going on in there. Love this fig colorway. So that is the finished hoe that I have for those socks. And this is the work in progress that I have for that. So 
like I said, Long Dog Yarn, February colorway, and the Fig colorway. So that is the first sock that is living in my project bag. And then the second sock, like I mentioned, is my Oil Spill sock in my own Fiber for the People colorway called Oil Spill. So here is what I have so far. And you guys, I'm obsessed with this color. I... I'm so, I'm digging the way that it's translating in the knitted fabric because when I dyed this and the yarn dried and I saw the colorway in all its glory and I came up with its name, it was the gray streak that ran through the skein. And I'm gonna actually show you a skein of oil spill later on in the show, but it was this gray streak that ran through the skein that just really struck me. And that's why I came up with the name oil spill. And so, the way that it's coming out in the knitted fabric with these gray streaks, it's just, it's perfect. I love it. The stitch definition of this two-ply fiber is beautiful. You can kind of see those stitches so nicely. This is my 80-20. It's called Taylor's Favorite. That's the name of the base. Um, two-ply, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. And you guys, this colorway kills me. I love it so much. There will be sock sets in the shop in the oil spill colorway, as well as a contrasting heels, cuffs and toes in the oil colorway, which is that gray. And I'll show that in a minute. The cake of this yarn is equally beautiful. And this is it here. So this is oil spill. So I, see, I use these hair clips to hold the ends of my cake in place so they don't come flying off, but I apologize for the messy cake. Um, I have no, there's no, I, there is no reason why it should be this sloppy. So I'm just gonna stuff that in there. Okay, so here is the oil spill cake. Look at all of those beautiful colors coming in the fuchsia, the different tones of blue, that gray streak coming through. Yeah, I'm, you guys, I'm obsessed. You will hear me rant and rave about my own hand dyed yarn um, and I am unapologetic about that because I am very proud of what I'm creating over here and why would I create something that I didn't love myself and that I didn't want to knit with? That would be ridiculous because you should make what you love and I do. I love all of the yarn so I apologize if it seems gratuitous. Is that even appropriate for this in this context? But you get what I'm saying. I love the yarn. I love the colorways. So I will expl I will express that when I share them with you. These two socks are living in this project bag, which I've shown several times. This was a gift by my dearest friend, Lauren. She got this for me from Cost Plus World Market, and I love it. It is perfect for two socks. Um, I have two cakes of yarn, two socks, and it is perfect. I love it. So I can kind of make my choice. I grab the project bag and I can choose which sock I want to work on. The next project is the one I have been knitting on most, I guess, monogamously since the last episode. When I have had time to sit down and knit, this is what I've been working on. We had some family in town the last two weeks. My brother and sister-in-law from Texas had come here to spend two weeks in town. So we got to see my niece and Angus got to play with her. It was just such a fun experience having them here. Um, it was so special. It makes me miss them so much when you know, they come and then they go and I realize how much I wish they lived here in town with us. So it was really special. So I didn't do a lot of knitting. Not only that, we had the launch of the shop and it was so cool having family here to help with that. So anyway, this is the project that I have been working on most monogamously since the last episode of the podcast. And it is my Exploration Station by Stephen West. And I am knitting this all in my own hand dyed yarn because, you know, I'm a fanatic I should say. So this is in um, a few different colors. So here it is, what I have so far. And you guys, I love this so much. The pattern is so much fun to knit. Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions was the one who showed this on her podcast and it inspired me to cast one on. Um, I'm not one to knit shawls. I never have been. I'm working on a Find Your Fade shawl right now, which I haven't knit on in a few weeks. Um, but these shawl patterns are so much fun. And I feel like Find Your Fade is fun because you get the color change and you get the lace. But it, it's kind of gotten a little bit old because it's taking me so long. But I'm going to finish it. And I it's in there by the couch ready for me to work on. But these Stephen West patterns, like this pattern, I'm telling you, flies 
off the needles. It keeps you interested. There's enough variation, like I said, to keep you interested. There's color change going on. It's garter stitch, so you don't have to do any purling. It also makes it super simple and mindless at times. But I really, really love this so much. So if you are looking for a shawl pattern to try um, and you want to test out some different skills, I know brioche is coming and I'm not sure how that's going to go over. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But this is definitely one to try. So let's talk about the yarn that we have going on in here. Like I said, it is all fiber for the people yarn. And my first color, which is color A, this is the espresso roast. And I'm going to show this to you in a cake because there is not a lot of it pres present in the project because it is just a small contrasting color. So that in a cake is this. And I really love this beautiful taupe color as kind of a neutral in projects like this. And the gold Stellina gives it that little extra pop and interest going on in there. It's just really, really beautiful. So that is Espresso Roast. The second color that I have showing up here is my Craig Nadoon colorway, and that is also the one that's present right here in the project. Oh, you guys, this green colorway, I just love it so much. The tobacco colors that pop through and the grays really add depth to this color, and it works in this project almost I mean, dare I say like a tonal even? I mean, I know there's definite variegation in the color. You see the tobacco and you see the green, but the way that it comes out when you look at this as a whole almost looks like you're just seeing different tones of green in there. And I really, really love that. That means that there's a lot of, um, I don't know, versatility in this colorway really. So I'm really, really into that. I, I love that so much. So the Craig Nadoon colorway in a cake Again, you have to forgive me for my really messy cakes. I'm sorry, what can I say? So this is the Craig Nadoon colorway in the cake. And you can see all of the variegation in here, especially the golds and the tobacco colors and the grays popping through in there. But I love it so much when it's knit up in a fabric because it all seems to blend together nicely. And oh, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. So this is on my 8020, there's no Stellina in this. This is Craig Nadoon. And then the next color featured is, I would go so far as to say that this colorway is my favorite, which is really hard because I love them all so much. But this one, I just get, I don't know, just get such a good warm fuzzy feeling inside when I look at a skein of this colorway. So this is the Peach Pit colorway. It is this color right here. This is Peach Pit on my Gold Stellina base. And Peach Pit is tonals of you know peaches and oranges and it has speckles of really bright berry like raspberry colors in there and it's supposed to represent the inside of a peach the inside of a really ripe peach now this is like i said on the gold stellina base and when you see that in skein form it's so pretty it looks and I said this in the last episode, but you guys, it's so beautiful. It looks like it's frosted. There's something about that gold Selena that just makes it look frosted. My Haute base, which is an 80-20, um, 80% superwash merino, 20% silk, is so beautiful and luxurious with this color. It just screams to be knit into a shawl. It's gorgeous. This is the Stellina, but I do have some of the Hope Base in the shop right now if you want to check that out, but I love it so much. The silk in there, oh, you guys, it's so beautiful. So here's my cake of Peach Pit, and oh, I love it. Again, sloppy cakes. Sloppy cakes. What was that? These things, they come out of me from nowhere. So here is the cake of Peach Pit. Um, beautiful muted peachy colors but what's really fun about this is you'll be knitting along and then out of nowhere comes a pop of that raspberry color and you can kind of see it happening in here a little bit but it's in there these little pops of these berry colors they're in there and when they come across your knitting they're so much fun to see those colors mixed in there so yeah i love this i love peach pit i especially love it on the gold selena it's beautiful on that silk uh, 8020 silk base but any base you guys i just I love it so much. And again, it's another really versatile colorway. It can be mixed into, you know, all kinds of like multicolor projects or fades or what have you. So yeah, so this is Peach Pit. And then the next color is, oh, you know what? I skipped, I skipped a color. That was Peach Pit. The one right before Peach Pit is this one right here, which is actually the color I'm working on right now, but I don't have a lot of it yet. 
This is my spring drop cloth colorway, this yellow that you're seeing right here, and it is also on my gold Stellina base. Now, this colorway is really, really yellow on the gold Stellina base, and I'm not exactly sure. Like, I do the exact same thing. I work the formula the exact same way, but for whatever reason, when it gets onto that gold Stellina base, it's a really beautiful spring yellow color, but it's much more yellow than when it's on any of the other bases. But I don't know, I kind of like that. I think it's just it's just something about that base that makes it that makes it seem like that. So I don't know, I really, really love it. But when you knit it into a fabric, it kind of mutes it down a little bit. However, here it's definitely very yellow. So I don't know. I love it. This is a seasonal colorway. Spring drop cloth was only for spring. I will be having some spring drop cloth sock sets in the shop on the update, which is June 15th. Um, but after that shop update, spring drop cloth won't be coming back um, for the duration of the year because I'll be bringing in a new drop cloth colorway for every season. So my next drop cloth colorway will be the summer drop cloth and so on and so forth. And so it will come back eventually, but not until all the other drop cloths of the seasons uh, of the year have have passed. So this spring drop cloth, its last appearance will be in the upcoming shop update, which is tomorrow. So here is the cake of spring drop cloth, a super, super yellow version. The ones that are popping up in the shop in the update are not going to be this yellow. They're more a muted, much more muted with the different speckles going on in there, but it's really beautiful. And the gold Stellina just ugh, makes it sparkle so beautifully. So there is spring drop cloth. Love that so much. And that is um, everything that I have in this version of the Exploration Station. And you guys, I'm really digging the way it's looking. I think that this, even though these aren't necessarily all neutral colors, I think that when it's done, this is an accessory that will go with so many things nicely, like from just, you know, a white top. It's so silly trying to hold it up to me like this right now because there's not a lot of it. But yeah, it would look pretty with white stripes. I'm obsessed with stripes. I wear stripes as neutrals because that's how I am. Yeah, I, I think about all the things I could wear this with. I feel like it could go with so many different things. So that is the Exploration Station by Stephen West in all fiber for the people yarn. If you are interested in any of the yarn you see, definitely check out the shop. There's not a lot in the shop. Most of the, the yarn that was in the shop on the launch day has been sold out, but there are a few skeins of Peach Pit left. So if you're interested, head over and uh nag some of those because when the update comes they can be gone in no time also when um i this is probably not news to and some of you but i i think it's a really good tip but as i'm working this pattern for the exploration station i am using highlighter tape to kind of help me keep track of where i am and so i put my pattern in a sheet protector and I stick my highlighter tape underneath the row where I'm working and it's way easier to peel the highlighter tape off of the sheet protector and move it around than it is to peel it off of the paper. It's actually not any easier, but it's better because the tape doesn't deteriorate as quickly. So if you are using highlighter tape, stick your pattern into a sheet protector because it helps when you're peeling that highlighter tape off and sticking it back on your pattern. So I have a few acquisitions that I want to share with you guys today, but, but the first acquisition I want to share with you guys was so graciously donated by Laura, who is the curator of Row One Yarns. She has a subscription program where you can pay a monthly fee and you can learn more about that at rowoneyarn.com. And with that, you are going to get every month 100 grams of yarn in various different colorways provided by one particular indie dyer. And this um, package that she gave me is with the is the Carnival of Color um, set that she's sending out right now and it is by the Northbound Knits Indie Dyer who is dying out of Ontario Canada but it is a curated collection of various different colorways by that Indie Dyer and it comes um, when you get it it comes with this packaging which is beautiful so this is her Ro Row One Yarns packaging so cute and squishy I love it and you get a little package of all of the minis that are 
various different colorways of this one indie dyer. So you get 100 grams total. So in this package is 100 grams of yarn, but they're all different colorways. So you kind of get a chance to experience lots of different colorways of a particular indie dyer. And it's great if you like to knit um, scrap projects, if you're working on um, granny stripe blanket or what have you, this is really perfect for that. So I was very um, grateful that she chose to gift one to me to keep. And then she's also providing one as a giveaway price. So I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to be giving this away, but definitely find out more information about row one um, yarn because it's a really cool way to learn about various different indie dyers, to have an opportunity to experience their yarn at the cost of one 100 gram skein. So you kind of get myriad colorways, like I said, at the cost of one 100 gram skein. So this is all Superwash Merino, 100% Superwash Merino. And this particular collection was inspired by A Day at the Beach and it's all um, Northbound Knits colorways. So you can check out more about Northbound Knits, but you can also check out more about Row One Yarn um, by going to rowoneyarn.com. So Laura, thank you so much for sharing this with me. Um, I am so excited to be able to give this away and to send more information about this. I think this is a really cool way of kind of spreading the news about various different indie dyers. I just, I love it. So Anytime somebody goes out of their way to curate something like this and create kind of a program or a subscription, I just think that's really awesome because it is spreading the word of the talent that's out there when it comes to hand dyed yarn. So I really like that. So that is row one yarn. Check it out and also just keep a lookout because this will be a giveaway sometime soon. The next acquisition I want to share with you guys is something that is it's part of a swap that I was doing with Lorelai Huerto. And I think, I don't know if I'm saying your last name correctly, Lorelai, please correct me if I'm wrong, but she is the podcaster behind the Knits and Beats podcast. She also has the Lorelai Huerto jewelry company. You can find her on Etsy. You can also find her on her own dedicated uh, website. She makes amazing jewelry. Her stuff is beautiful, you guys. So definitely check her out for that. She has a really fun, lively podcast. So you definitely want to check that out as well. But I decided I wanted to send her a skein of fiber for the people yarn for her to try and in return she sent me this really cool package so she sent now she doesn't make progress markers or stitch markers um that's not something that she does as part of her like her collections but she decided she was going to make some for me to include on the podcast to share with you guys so she sent one for me to keep and it is a set of stitch markers and a progress keeper and you guys it is beautiful. So this is, like I said, you have a collection of stitch markers here and then this is a progress keeper and on the progress keeper is a ram. I am an Aries. She asked me what my um, zodiac was and I told her I was an Aries so she made me a progress keeper with my my sign, my, um, what are the astrological signs? So I thought that was really, really special. So this one is one for me to keep and I love the colors of the different beads. Oh, how fun. Look at this. My, this, look at this little green bead. Let's see if you can see that. That little green bead. It's very similar to the nail polish that I have on right now, but it's kind of iridescent. Lorelei, these are beautiful. I love them so much. So this was gifted to me by Lorelei and she also put one together for me to give away. And you guys, it's so Pretty. So this is a series again of series of stitch markers plus a really really fun progress keeper that is going to be going away in an upcoming giveaway. So there we go. Look at you got this really cool cat is the progress keeper and then these really fun charm stitch markers. These are just beautiful. Yeah, Lorelai, I really love these. Thank you so much for the donation and the gift. And I can't wait to give this away. So I probably, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this with the Row One Yarn Package to give away um, in an upcoming giveaway. I'm not sure what that's going to be yet, but ugh, these are so beautiful. Is that, do we call that the all-seeing eye right here? I don't know a whole lot about that kind of thing, but maybe that's what that's called. Yeah, I don't know. I love these. These are so beautiful. So she sent me that. She also sent me this really cool project bag. So here is the back of the project bag. I'm showing you that first because the front is the cutest, so I'm going to save that. But it has this really fun fabric that kind of is this, that's guard, that's covering the drawstrings. And then there's this really nice soft fabric on the inside with that cross hatching. And then you guys look at this. <gasps> What? 
Look how cute that is. It's sewn on. It's a little patch that's zigzag stitched onto the bag and it is so precious. I love this project bag so much. I cannot wait to put a project in here. Oh, I love this. I mean, just like look at the keys of this pat, like the way the patch is drawn out, the keys, you can see all the letter. Oh, it's the details. It's the little things, you guys. So I really, really love this project bag. Lorelai, thank you so much. You outdid yourself. She sent me a little card um, that is very sweet. That just made my day. So the next acquisition I have is another swap uh, package that I received from Samantha at the Lavender Loon Yarn Company. She expressed a real interest in a couple colorways that I had. And so I talked about let's, you know, wanted to do a swap because I think her yarn is beautiful as well. So she sent me a beautiful skein of her yarn. You definitely need to check her out if you haven't already. And then she also sent me a little collection of minis and a really nice card and some tea. So I'm going to share that with you. So this is her skein of rhubarb rainbow. It's on her 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina, and it's a gold gold tone stellina, which is beautiful. I love gold stellina, as you know, because that's what I use as my um, stellina base. So here it is. This is rhubarb rainbow, and it's really beautiful. Love this green. I'm super into these like emerald shamrock green colors. The red in there and the orange down here with some of the yellow and the creamy tones. Oh, it's just so beautiful. And I definitely get the colorway name inspiration. I can see rhubarb in here. I love the, the rainbow, you know, aspect of that. So you can see those pops of color coming through here. So this is just beautiful. It's nice and squishy and soft. So thank you so much, Samantha. I love this so much. Her label is right here. So here is her logo, Lavender Loon Yarn Company, and it's hand dyed in northern Minnesota. So it's really cold up there. So you're, Samantha, you're knitting all year long, which is awesome. So beautiful. She also sent me a few mini skeins to sample, and I'm not exactly sure what the colorways are for the mini skeins, but that's okay because they're beautiful and I love them. And I'm, my collection of minis is fastly growing. So we have this one, which is a lot of fun. Really fun colors in there. And then we have this one, soft, nice, soft. Um, I'm sure this is like a four ply 75, 25. It's really, really nice and soft. This color, ooh, this color blows me away. Oh yeah beautiful. And then I love this blue. You know, it's hard to find a really good true, not true, I mean, that's the wrong word to use, but it's hard to find a really good blue that just goes with lots of different things. And I feel like this is a really good one for that. I mean, it just goes well with lots of different colors. It's kind of a fun mix. So these are beautiful. So Samantha, thank you so much. Love your yarn. I love this. I'm pretty sure this is a 75-25 four ply base and I really love it. So this is yarn from Lavender Loon Yarn Company and it's gorgeous you guys. Definitely check her yarn out. She's talented. My last acquisition was generously donated to me by, it, not even, do, it's not donated, this wasn't a donation, this was just a really kind gift from Fiber Friend to Fiber Friend. This was sent to me from Erica, who is the um, beautiful sewist behind Ink Bags. If you haven't checked out her project bags, I've shared a few on um, the podcast. My Stephen West Exploration Station is living in a peekaboo ink bags. Um, project bag here. I have notions that are in one of my little Daphne ink bags. So definitely check out ink bags. You guys, her stuff is amazing. But she so kindly sent me something that I know is going to help me with my fingers that get pricked for my Haya Haya's. So these are, now if you've watched previous episodes, you will know that Haya Haya Sharps have had a tendency in the past to prick my index finger um, repeatedly, creating calluses and just a lot of discomfort and what have you. And so I've had to figure out how to keep that from happening. And so I've gotten lots of different recommendations for various different things. I've actually had these um, recommended to me. Somebody said they picked them up um, and that they worked really well, but I hadn't gotten a chance to get them. And so when these got sent, when these were sent to me in the mail by Erica, I was just so 
thankful and it was so nice that she would think to do something like that. So I'm really excited to share this with you. These are called Thimble It. You may or may not have seen these before, but they are stick on thimbles and they make projects easier and more comfortable. Apply one cell stick pad to each working fingertip. Enjoy hours of stitching pleasure. And that's exactly what I was looking for. I needed something that wouldn't get in the way of my knitting, that wouldn't become cumbersome, like an actual thimble, even one of those fitted kind of leather thimbles that goes over your finger. I needed something simple. And that's exactly what this is, is it just sticks on your finger. So let's go ahead and see, let's try one out. So Erica, thank you so much. This is so cool. Let's read the directions first. Are there directions or is this something that's really self-explanatory? Stick it to your finger, just put it there. So this is what it looks like. Can you see that? And you just take that, you stick it to the finger in question, which is my index finger, because for some reason, and somebody somebody else mentioned this earlier, um, when I was reading some of the comments on YouTube, that you, like, I push the needle with my index finger. I'll push it, you know, to pull the stitches up to the tip. So that's why I have this problem. There it is. My face is in the way. <laughs> all right, so that is it. That's all it is. It's this little sticky, thimble thing that goes on your fingertip and it's not like I can completely move my hands around. It's not in the way. Um, it's awesome. It's exactly what I needed. It's just a hard plastic covering on your fingertip that'll keep it from having holes poked in it from your sharp hiya hiyas. So thank you, Erica. I think this is perfect. She actually mentions in her letter that she sends to me, um, which was very sweet. Um, she says, these are a lot less intrusive than a regular thimble and can be reused many times. I usually just stick it to the front of my Notions pouch when I'm not using it, especially one of those peekaboo Notions pouches because they have the plastic covers. Um, I hope this helps. Happy knitting. So yeah, definitely. I could just take this, stick it to my project bag, my ink bag's project bag on that clear part of the bag. And then when I want to use it again, so there it is, I stuck it on there. And then when I wanna use it again, I just peel it off. Stick it back to my finger. And we're in business. That is awesome. Erica, thank you so much. So yeah, if you guys have the same situation that I have and you are poking holes in your fingers with your high high sharps, look no further than thimble it. So I want to tell you guys a little bit about my experience with the launch of the Fiber for the People shop. It happened on June 1st. If you've been watching the podcast and following along on Instagram, you know that the shop launched on June 1st. I've been posting lots of pictures and uh, building anticipation of the different yarn that was going to be in the shop on the launch. And so I was so excited when the actual day came. I'm telling you the night before it was like the night before Christmas. It was exciting. I could barely sleep. I was, you know, up really late making sure everything on the website was going to go well. Um, and I couldn't be more thrilled with how well it went and how successful it was. If you came and supported Fiber for the People, if you bought yarn, if you checked out the website, thank you so much for being a part of that. It was just such an overwhelming experience to see the um, the traffic coming into the shop um, online, of course, and to, to see the yarn being, you know, adopted and sent off to new homes. And so I, um, yeah, it was just, it was a really cool experience and I'm, I, it's hard for me to communicate it clearly, I guess. But what was really special about it was, like I said, my brother and sister-in-law were in town with my niece and they were here for the launch. Um, we got together and we had breakfast that morning to kind of be there when everything started and make sure everything went smoothly and also just to kind of be a support for me because it is a really exciting experience. It is a little overwhelming and so it's nice to have your family close by. And we just all kind of celebrated the success together and it was really really very special so thank you so much all of you that supported fiber for the people yarn um it just means it means so much to me it is so exciting to be able to share my creativity with you my passion with you especially even if even considering it's a newfound passion um 
but these these yarns I'm so excited to be able to share them with you because I become so attached to the colorways and the yarn they are like my little yarn babies that I send off to live in new homes and there is a little bit of a bitter sweetness involved in that but it's just so great the week following the launch I had a lot of help with my family being in town helping me take stuff to the post office package up all of the orders um, in their little packages and it was just I don't know it was just really special let's talk about the update of the fiber for the people shop that is happening on June 15th which is tomorrow and it starts at 10 o'clock a.m. all of the updates for fiber for the people will be on Thursday every two weeks so this is uh, Thursday is tomorrow and that is June 15th and then two weeks following tomorrow will be the next update so I'm gonna be doing them every two weeks following the upload of the wool needles hands podcast so that I can share with you guys what's going to be in the update also please don't forget to head over to the shop before the update or whenever you have an opportunity sooner rather than later and sign up for the newsletter I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode but it's really important if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in the shop you can definitely get information about that on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people but if you sign up for the newsletter every Tuesday before the shop update I will send out the newsletter that gives you a little bit more detailed look at what's going to be in the update. Promo codes will be in the newsletter. Um, if I do any other promotional shipping offers, um, any kind of sales that might be going on, all of that will be in the newsletter. I don't do a lot of um, pricing information on Instagram. I actually won't do any pricing information on Instagram. That's just more of a snapshot of the products that are gonna be in the shop, um, the new colorways, fun things like that. But pricing, promotional information, um, some will be shared on Instagram, but some of it will only be shared in the newsletter, especially for newsletter subscribers, that little extra promotion for those of you that subscribe to the newsletter. So definitely do that. Head over to the website, scroll down to the bottom, sign up for, it's called In The Loop, the Fiber For The People newsletter. So you can look for that and keep in tune that way. But in the meantime, I wanna share with you guys some of the yarn that's going to be in the shop update. Now, I am filming this on Sunday. That's usually my podcast filming day and I edit and get it uploaded by Wednesday because it takes me that long to edit. So I have some yarn to share with you that is going to be in the shop. However, I don't have everything dyed up yet. But without further ado, let's go ahead and look at some of the colorways included in the Fiber for the People update on June 15th at 10 a.m. Okay, as always, I have a giant pyramid of yarn in my lap and there's a little bit of yarn over here. So I'm gonna do my best at not making a huge mess. All right, let's go ahead and look at some of the things that are upcoming in the Fiber for the People shop. So I'm going to start with sock sets. You guys, we are going to have sock sets in the shop on June 15th, and I'm really excited about that. I have chosen the color combinations based on really popular colorways, some that I just really like, and I've also chosen spring drop cloth as one of the colorways to include in a sock set because we are going to be ending spring drop cloth for this year after this shop update. So after this update, spring drop cloth will not be in the shop anymore because it's going to be making way for the other seasonal drop cloths that will be coming. So the first uh, yarn that I would like to share with you is the spring drop cloth sock set. So here is the sock set for spring drop cloth. It is including a mini fiber. So this is the tag for the mini fiber. Every mini will come with a tag that has the logo on the front and the fiber content on the back, plus the washing and care instructions. So this is the mini fiber tag. So this mini fiber included with spring drop cloth is in the Moving On Up colorway. And I love this combination together. It is so just, it's just perfect. And it's kind of different. Usually when you see um, sock sets, you see lots of really punchy colors, maybe some neons going on. And I love that. But this is kind of a more sophisticated sock set. Maybe it's something about this mo uh, mauve color, along with the springing colors and the drop cloth that kind of lend itself to a more sophisticated sock, if you will. Whatever. Okay, so we have Moving On Up and Spring Drop Cloth. I chose the Moving On Up colorway, this mauve colorway, because you see it being brought out here with some of the speckles. The mauve comes through really, really beautifully. So you can see speckling going on there. There's the mauve colorway. Oh, you guys. Oh, I'm looking at this, and the more I'm looking at this in the green, the more I'm realizing how much I love it. And I knew I loved it to begin with. Oh. Yeah, so okay, this is gorgeous. Must have sock set for summer. Um, a great knit because these socks are going to be beautiful to wear in the fall. 
Oh, I love this so much. So this is in my two ply 80 20 base. All of the spring drop cloth sock sets are going to come in the Taylor's favorite base, which like I said, is a two ply 80 20, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. The mini is also in the same fiber content, same two ply twists. So that is the spring drop cloth sock set here. My next sock set that will be making appearance making an appearance in the shop is my oil spill sock set. I'm super excited about this one. And all of the oil spill sock sets are going to be on my MCN base. That's the Costanza base. It's my 80% um, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And here it is. So this is oil spill and it has a coordinating mini mini fiber in oil and the mini is also the MCN base so all the bases um, are consistent between the mini and the main colorway so this is the oil spill sock set here oh it's so gorgeous I just love oil spill so much I think other than peach pit I would say peach pit is my first favorite colorway from fiber for the people and oil spill is my second and oil spill I have to be completely honest has been a little bit of a labor of love because if you've watched the previous episodes you'll know that the first time I ever dyed oil, oil spill it was a single skein in a pot it was one of my small pots I was just playing around I kept track of the formula but I dyed it on a single skein and so the number of skeins you have in the pot will greatly affect the way the color way comes out and so when I tried to recreate it I didn't get the same results I wasn't as happy with them because I was trying to recreate it with multiple skeins um, so it took me some time the the oil spill that was in the previous update was beautiful and it came out really really nicely this is just a little bit different than even that one because I'm trying to tweak it to find that perfect balance and I think this looks great I think this looks so beautiful all the colors are represented in this beautifully Oh gosh, I'm knitting those oil spill socks right now and I kind of wish I was patient enough to wait and knit them with the contrasting heels, cuffs, and toe because this beautiful charcoal gray oil colorway is just ugh, drop dead. I love this so much. So this is the oil spill sock set and it will be available in the shop tomorrow. And the last, and that's all on MCN, that's the only base that I'll be offering that on. Um, the last sock set that I have at this point, and I think this is going to be the last sock set of this update, is my Cactus Flower sock set. Cactus Flower was a very popular colorway on launch day, and I anticipated that because it got a lot of attention as I posted pictures on Instagram, and so I was really excited about that, the way that that turned out in the shop launch. And so I'm, I'm putting these together in a sock set because I love the coordinating colors, and I love this colorway so so much so this is the cactus flower sock set with its coordinating mini fiber and this set right here is my 8020 superwash merino nylon my taylor's favorite base and the mini is in the saguaro colorway which is very appropriate for the cactus flower colorway so here is the sock set oh you guys look at that i love this oh it's so beautiful and this is going to make such a beautiful contrasting heels cuff and toe oh, just look at this come on what gorgeous so this is the 80 20 but i will also be featuring this sock set on my 75 25 loft base so here it is on the loft base the colorway is a little bit more muted on this base anything i dye on this base is always just a little bit more muted than it is on my 80 20 which I think is actually kind of nice. It's kind of a nice representation of the colorway. It goes really nicely with that fiber base. So these are the two cactus flower sock sets that will be in the shop, 7525 and 8020. Oh yes, these will be relatively limited quantities for now just to see, um, to see how well they do. And I'm excited because you guys, I think these are, I think these are gonna be a hit. I really want one badly. That's the danger about doing this is that you dye all of these beautiful yarns and you have them right in front of you and they could be yours. They really could, but they shouldn't be because that's not what we're doing this for. We're spreading the love, spreading the color. 
So these will be available on Thursday for the shop update. Okay, so that is all I have for sock sets. So let's go ahead and move on to the colorways that are going to be featured in the shop update that I have so far. So the first colorway that I am going to be adding into the shop for tomorrow's update is Hypercolor Shirt. Hypercolor Shirt was a super popular colorway on launch day, sold out within the, I would say these sold out within the first 30 minutes. It was really, really exciting. Um, I might be wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of a different colorway, but these sold out so quickly um, they didn't stand a chance. So I'm super excited to bring these back um, so people have a chance to snag a skein of Hypercolor Shirt. It's really beautiful. So what I'm showing you here, this is my MCN base. So this is Costanza the Costanza base and for hypercolor shirt. Oh, it's so beautiful. Those speckles together are amazing. And then this is my singles base. Colorways are more vibrant, sometimes more muted, sometimes more vibrant on a singles base. I think it's really interesting to see how the colorways translate and uh, kind of make themselves known on various different yarn bases. So this is singles and that is hypercolor shirt. The next colorway that is a returning colorway from the shop launch is Punk Music Made Me Do It. So here is another really popular colorway from shop launch. This is Punk Music Made Me Do It on the Toasty Sock Base, which is 80% Blueface Luster uh, BFL, 20% Nylon. And I love this base, nice hearty sock. Um, not as soft as a merino, but definitely really nice and soft, has a nice hand. Gonna give you a more hearty, rugged, rugged sock. I really love this. Um, the BFL 8020 shows that the colorway will look different on this as well. It's really interesting how that happens. It's a little bit more muted. It has a little bit more of an ecru color. There's a more creamy uh, tones, more gold tones in the yarn naturally. So it's going to have a little bit of that um, undertone in the color. So more of that gold tone that's just in the fiber naturally comes through a little bit more. And you can see that when I show you Punk Music Made Me Do It on singles. So here is Punk Music Made Me Do It on the singles base. You can see the pink is much more vibrant here than it is on Toasty Sock. And that is just because the yarn base is really going to have a lot to do with the way that the color kind of is showcased in the yarn. So punk music made me do it. Super excited about this. I just love, gosh, I just love the chartreuse and the like fuchsia going on in here that you see mixed in with the straw colorway that comes through and these black speckles, you guys. Stop it. I love it so much. I'm going to be adding this colorway to my collection. I'm going to be adding all of these to my collection at one point or another because I'm obsessed. There isn't a yarn I put up in front of this camera that I don't love. Take it from me because if I don't love it, I won't sell it. So punk music made me do it. Okay, the next colorway. This was a popular colorway. I've tweaked it a little bit. It's not quite as deep. <laughs> play on words, no pun intended. It's not quite as deep as it was in the two, I had a, only two skeins of this in the previous um, shop launch. So it was a very, very, very small batch because um, because I hadn't dyed anymore. I wanted to see how it went how it went over. And so I dyed up some more of it and I, t I toned it down a little bit. There, This is a much more bright version of this color and I love it so much. I loved the previous, but I really love this so much. So this is Mariana's. Um, inspired by the Marianas Trench. Um, nice, beautiful, marine-inspired colorway name. Variegated, but almost tonal. There's some some really pretty, like, aquamarine greens going on in here. Some real punchy, deep purples happening. And then that really pretty peacock blue com color coming through. I think this is so gorgeous. Such a great contrasting color. Ugh, but it's excellent. All of these will be on the um, MCN base. So Mariana's in the next shop update will be featured on my Costanza base, which is my MCN. And I think it's gorgeous on this base. Yeah, it's a really pretty two ply um, MCN twist and two ply and MCN just go so well together. So that is Mariana's and that will be in the shop. I'm super excited about this. Ooh, I love this so much. Okay. I will also be featuring on my MCN base. This is a colorway that I've had for a while and I did not feature it in the shop um, 
launch because I was thinking I was going to keep it. But I have been told by family members that I'm crazy, that I should put it out there and let people see it because it's a really cool, funky color. So this is Behind Closed Doors on my MCN base. And I think I may have shown this on the podcast previously. I can't really remember. But you guys, what? Katie from the Arrow Knits podcast says that this brings out her like grungy goth girl side and it totally does. It's super gothy and really different. Um, and I love it. And I love that it's on the MCN base because it's super luxurious. It is so soft. I can't even tell you it is so soft. So it's this black with a really pretty dark Cabernet color. Oh, you guys. Anyway, this will be in the shop. I am so excited to put this in the shop because now just looking at this on the screen and in person, and I've been eyeballing this. It's been on my shelves and I was thinking I was going to hang on to it. So I'm actually hanging on to one skein, but the rest are going in the shop. So that is behind closed doors. Then we have some new colorways. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the new colorways. We only have two new colorways at this point. But like I said, I am going to be dyeing some more between now and the shop update. So there will be some new colorways coming on. So this next colorway, I'm so excited about. I love the punchy vibrance of it. I love the summertime feel. I'm just digging it so much. So I'm going to show it to you on my single space. I'm going to show it to you on my MCN base. And then I'm going to show it to you re-skained. And I'll tell you why I'm going to do that in just a second. So this is the the Lady or the Tiger Lily colorway. <laughs> So I just thought of the lady or the tiger lily. Let's do a Wheel of Fortune before and after style colorway name for this. So that is what we have going on here. And it is gorgeous. I love this so much. These punchy pops of purple coming through and the green, plus this really pretty vibrant orange, all on a nice soft pink base. Everything that's happening here is on a solid pink base of the yarn. And it is special, you guys please. So gorgeous. So this is the Lady or the Tiger Lily on my singles base. This is the Lady or the Tiger Lily on my MCN base. And it will be on a few other bases as well, but I'm just showing these two for now. The colors are a little bit more punchy on the MCN, but it's gorgeous. There's that. And then to give you a little bit of an idea of what this might look like knitted up into the fabric or caked up. So you kind of have an idea of how the colors will be distributed at that point. I went ahead and reskained it just to see what that would be like. And so this is the Lady or the Tiger Lily reskained. And this uh, skein will be sold with the others, but on the yarn band, it will just say reskained. It's the exact same colorway. This is, I'm gonna show this to you on the single. So you're getting the exact same colorway. It's just already reskained, so you kind of have an idea. So here is the Lady or the Tiger Lily, and it has been reskained. And you can see how beautiful the yarn is with all of the colors distributed the way that they are here. And those oranges coming through, oh, it's so much fun. I'm definitely turning this into a sock set. I absolutely can't wait. I haven't figured out which color I would use as the contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes, but seeing my nail polish up against this and then seeing the green coming through here, it could be beautiful with that green, maybe even with the orange. So yeah, I love this. So this is singles, um, the Lady or the T Tiger Lily colorway, reskained, and this is it, not reskained. This is it right out of the dye pot. So you can kind of see what's happening here once you get this fabric knitted up, what it's going to look like. So beautiful. Super excited about this colorway. Like I said, it's a new colorway and that will be in the shop on June 15th. Okay, the last colorway that I'm going to share with you guys that I have at this point is also a new colorway. 
super excited about this one as well, you guys. I'm obsessed. It's different. I think that's kind of my reaction to this colorway is it's different. I haven't seen a colorway like this that I can recall and that makes me really proud um, because it's, sometimes it's really hard. You know, when you come up with your colorways, it seems like a lot of different colorways could be derivative of others that you've seen. And so it's hard to, you know, it's a challenge to come up with colorways that are truly unique. There's always nuances in your colorways that might have been seen in previous. So, it, you know, you want to, that's kind of a goal, I think, of any indie dyer is to try to find something new. Um, or if it's similar, to try to add that one thing that makes it new and punchy. And so I'm super excited about this. This is called um, Backseat Serapi. And I called it that because it reminds me of a Serapi blanket that you see in the back backseat of you know cars driving down the road so whatever that's what I that's what came to mind when I dyed this up um, so this is backseat serape on singles oh yeah oh you guys what am I doing to myself I'm creating an obsession so yes here it is in all of its glory with all of its fun variegation and colors I'm gonna get you up close and you can see what's happening in here Sock set, hello! You know, it's a lot of fun dreaming up the sock sets that you could create with this stuff. I, there's so much potential here. Like, you, oh my gosh, like chartreuse. You know, this really pretty pink running through. Blue contrasting heels, cuffs and toes, please. I've got my work cut out for me. This colorway, oh heavens. So this is on the singles base right here. Now, like I mentioned before, singles will provide you with um, a little bit more of a vibrant colorway, maybe even a little bit more muted, but the colors will be a little bit more vibrant. And then I have, I'm showing it on my toasty sock because like I said before, the toasty sock, maybe I should call it an eggshell color. Like I said, that ecru is a little bit more rich on the BFL base. And so it causes the colors to have a little bit more of a creaminess to them, maybe a little bit more of that ecru undertone. So this is a backseat serape on the toasty sock base. Same colors in here, but it's definitely just a little bit more muted but it's so beautiful. Oh, I'm just so into it. Those blues that pop through, you can see them in here. Oh, you guys. Oh, please. I just can't get enough. Look at that. Ooh, hi, Oscar. Oscar likes this one. So we have backseat serape on singles and we have backseat serape on toasty sock. And it's beautiful. So I'm super excited. This will be on a couple other bases as well, but I feel like these two bases, showing these to you, will give you a, the best general idea of how it will be um, on each of the different bases. What I am going to do differently in this shop update that I didn't do in the shop launch is I am going to show a picture of the colorway represented on each of the different bases that are gonna be available in the update. So that way you can see um, how it's going to look on the base that you are ordering. Because as we all know, anybody who purchases um, artisanal hand dyed yarn knows that um, the base will have a big impact on what the colorway will look like. And so it's out of fairness to the buyer, I think it's important for you to be able to see that. And so, um, yeah, so definitely expect that in the update. I'm going to make an effort to make sure that happens with every um, colorway that you can see it on each of the different bases. So keep an eye out for that. But that is what we have so far that's going to be in the shop for the Fiber for the People update. The shop update is going to be June 15th, Thursday at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So mark your calendars, sign up for the newsletter. That's really important so you can stay up to date um, and be there or be square, you guys. This stuff has been good. It went so fast in the shop launch so definitely um, definitely be there and be ready to get your hands on some of this amazing yarn it's ugh, it's so good so let's see if I can get let's see if I can get some of this together to show you all at once do one of these one of these guys get this guy in there one of these I don't even know if I can do this this is ridiculous all right this is all I think I can manage so we've got all of these, all of these new and returning colorways going to be filling up the shelves of the Fiber for the People shop on Thursday, June 15th at 10 a.m.
All right, guys, it's almost time for me to head out, but I wanna make sure that you remember to definitely get involved in the local yarn store call to action. It's a little something that we do here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast where I call out to you guys to provide me with video footage, photos of your local yarn store wherever you are. We have a lot of international viewers here at the podcast, and so it's really cool to be able to see these little local yarn shops from people all over the world. So please gather together your footage, send it in to me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. I will compile it together, put it to music, make it really cool, add it to the end of the show, and I will definitely give you credit for your photos. I'd rather be anonymous, I can do that too, but definitely send in that footage so we can spread the love. Definitely do that, get involved with the local yarn store call to action. Be sure to stick around at the end of the show because I am sharing with you guys a local yarn store from Mission Viejo, California. This yarn shop was provided to me by my dearest friend Lauren in California. She sent over some footage from her local yarn store and this is Yarn Del Sol, like I said in Mission Viejo. Super cute yarn shop. Lauren, we definitely need to check this place out next time I'm there because it's amazing. So check it out you guys and then don't forget to participate in the local yarn store call to action. Alright guys, until next time on episode episode 11. Happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing, and I will see you then. Bye!